Everybody, welcome back to the shop. You know, when I was learning, teaching myself to hone freehand without the use of a honing guide, probably the most important aid that I had was hollow grinding my tools. However, it seems that there are still a lot of people that have this deep-rooted fear of the grinder. Um, this widespread phobia has caused manufacturers to come up with a variety of expensive slow-speed grinders, um, soft friable grinding wheels, um, and even more expensive, slow speed wet grinders. Um, the thing is, with the exception of the wet grinder, none of these grinders or grinding wheels by themselves are going to prevent you from overheating your tools. Without practicing proper technique, even these slow speed grinders and soft friable grinding wheels will overheat and draw the temper from tool steel. However, once you learn proper grinding technique, what you'll find is that these expensive slow speed grinders and soft, expensive, friable grinding wheels really aren't necessary. A standard six inch high speed grinder and the coarse gray grinding wheel that they typically come with is perfectly fine for grinding tool steel as long as you practice proper grinding technique. So today what I wanna to talk about is um, briefly talk about just some general equipment needed to grind your tools. And more importantly, I wanna talk about proper grinding technique so that you can prevent overheating your tools regardless of what you're using to grind them with. So the first piece of equipment you're gonna need, of course, is a grinder. Um, and just about anything will work. If you've seen some of my older sharpening videos, you may have seen me using an old hand crank grinder. These can be made to work well as long as all their parts are in good working order. Mine had a pretty significantly bent shaft, so I never really got it to work all that well for me. You may have also seen me use a hand-cranked wet grinder that I built some months back, um, but that also had its issues. The pan wasn't wide enough, and when I was grinding wide chisels and plain irons, the water tended to drip all over the place and make a mess. Plus, my daughter broke the handle off, so I've gone back to using my old high-speed six-inch grinder that I got from hardware store probably about 15 years ago. You can pick these up for about $45 um, and they do everything that you'll need. The next thing you're going to need is a proper tool rest. Now you can get good aftermarket tool rests for these um, or you can go ahead and build one for yourself out of some scrap hardwood like I've done here. The next thing that you're going to need that's important obviously is the grinder wheel. What's important here is not that so much the type of wheel. You can go ahead and get the white or the pink or the expensive blue wheels if you like, but it's really not necessary. Um, what I have here is just a standard aluminum oxide six inch grinding wheel that I think I paid about $9 for. The important attribute of this wheel is that it be a very coarse grit. This is a 46 grit wheel. Um, 36 grit would be even better. I wouldn't go over 46 grit. Coarse grit wheels are going to grind faster. They're also going to grind cooler than a higher grit wheel. Um, so if you have higher grit wheels that you use for your high speed steel turning tools, maybe you've got an 80 grit or a 120 grit, um, I would not recommend using those. You're gonna burn your carbon steel tools with them. Go with a very coarse grit wheel, 36 or 46 grit only. Finally, you're gonna need a way to keep your wheels clean and true. And this is probably the most important part of proper grinding. There are a couple of different types of dressing tools that I use. Um, the two that I use most often are a multi-point diamond dressing tool and a hardened steel star wheel type dressing tool. The multi-point diamond dresser is simply a block of aluminum with diamonds bonded to the surface. You need to be careful with this type of wheel dresser though, because if you use too much pressure 
on a coarse wheel, you can easily tear the diamonds right out of the bond. The other dresser simply uses hardened steel wheels along a central axle that's screwed into a metal handle. To use the wheel dresser, rest it on the tool rest and guide it gently across the face of the grinding wheel to remove glazing and a very thin layer of the wheel and expose fresh grit. The other thing that you're going to want to keep on hand is just some small container of water. And you're going to use this to cool off the tools as you're grinding. Regardless of how clean and true you keep this grinding wheel and how coarse of a wheel that you use and what kind of wheel you use, grinding generates heat. So every once in a while as that tool begins to warm up, you're going to want to cool it off in water to remove the excess heat before you get back to grinding. And this is what's going to prevent you from overheating that tool. And there could be a few reasons that you're grinding your tools. Um, if you're grinding to change the bevel angle, or if you're removing a damaged area of a, of a tool, a chip to the edge, you want to start by grinding the edge of that tool completely blunt. This allows you to reestablish the square edge, remove any damage, and get that edge nice and straight before you go ahead and grind the bevel. You can use the same process if you're establishing a camber into a plain iron, let's say, um, that's uh, straight at the moment, but instead of dry, uh, grinding straight across, you're just gonna grind that shape of that camber into the edge instead. If you are not removing damage or changing bevel angle, and all you're doing is reestablishing the hollow grind in a tool that's been honed to almost a flat bevel, then you don't need to blunt the edge. Instead, just set your tool rest so that the stone, the grinding wheel, contacts the bevel of the tool at the center of the bevel in order to reestablish that hollow grind without grinding all the way to the edge. When you're ready to start grinding, simply hold the tool flat to the tool rest at the desired angle. Move the tool straight across the stone with gentle even pressure. You're really trying not to put too much pressure on the grinding wheel here. The harder you push, the more heat you're going to generate and you're really not going to remove material any more quickly by pushing harder. All you're going to do is generate more heat. So I just make a few passes with gentle pressure against the grinding wheel and I'm continuously checking that bevel and what I'm doing is I'm watching the blunt edge and I want to make sure that I'm grinding that blunt edge away evenly. And as the tool begins to heat up, I'll dunk it in water to cool it off and dry it just so I don't get the grinding wheel wet before I go back to the wheel. And I continue with nice, even, gentle pressure, trying not to take off too much material too quickly or heat the tool too much. As you continue grinding, what you might notice is that the sparks that are thrown from the tool seem to get smaller and fewer in number, and the tool might also seem to get hotter faster than it did before. What this means is that it's probably time to redress the wheel. So simply take your dressing tool and clean off the glazing and re-true the surface of that wheel, and then you can go ahead and go back to grinding the tool and you should notice that the sparks are larger and greater in number after redressing the wheel. As I get closer to finishing, I'm going to really pay attention to that blunt edge and I don't want to grind unevenly. So what I will do is check and I may even just grind certain areas to try and remove more steel from those areas to even out um, that blunt edge if I'm not grinding it evenly. Again, dunking frequently in water. The closer I get to being finished, the less pressure I'm using on the grinding wheel. And I wasn't using a lot of pressure to begin with, but as I get closer to being finished, I'll use even less. And contrary to what you may read some places, I will actually grind all the way to the edge. I don't leave anything. Um, I will take it all the way and grind the blunt edge completely away. 
But the only way to really be able to do this is with a properly dressed wheel that's clean and doesn't create that heat from a glazed surface. The process is almost identical for a cambered iron. The only difference being that I will sweep the iron in a gentle arc to follow the camber rather than grinding straight across. When you're done grinding, you should just barely be able to see a hint of that blunt edge. Or if you're like me and you're brave enough to grind all the way to the edge, you won't see really any reflection at all off the edge and you may just see a few ragged grinder marks. So if you've been afraid of the grinder, I hope this convinces you to give it a try. Um, I think you'll see once you've had a success or two that it's really not as bad as it's made out to be. Just remember, coarse wheel, dress it frequently and keep it clean, use minimal pressure, and cool the tool in water frequently. And don't worry, if you do happen to overheat a tool and turn it a little blue, hone it up and use it anyway. It's still steel and it's still harder than the wood. Eventually, you'll grind away the bluing and be back to properly tempered steel. So it's still not the end of the world if you overheat it a little bit. So give it a try and I think you'll find that uh, it really helps you out if you're, especially if you're trying to break away from the honing guide and learn to hone freehand. Thanks for watching.